Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we are diving into the basics of SQL, which is a crucial tool for anyone working in data, tech, or even product. SQL, or Structured Query Language, also known as SQL, is the standard language for managing and manipulating databases. Whether you're analyzing data or building products, understanding SQL is key to making data-driven decisions. Let's get started with some basic commands and concepts. If this is too basic for you, jump over to the next part of the video. So let's begin. First of all, I have a table called celebs that I want to view in order to start other operations. Now in SQL, the command select followed by an asterisk is used to retrieve columns from a table. The asterisk is a wildcard that represents all the columns of the specified table. The basic syntax is select asterisk from table name. Now, this is one of the most basic commands and the most important one. Um, Using this, you can basically see the entire table, the table in its entirety. If I want to pick up a particular column from the table, I'm going to see the column name, and I'm going to explicitly tell SQL um, in the command to return that to me. So over here, I'll do select name from setups. All right. And this returns me the name. And I'm going to keep this window, the query results, open for you so you're able to see exactly what and how our results are changing. Next, I can copy paste this. I can say I want to see the age. And hence, I'm going to see the age of extracted from the table. Now, suppose I want to see both the table and the name, the name and the age. It could be something like this. Over here, I see the name and the age. Now, let's use a very important command that comes very handy, and that is the where command. So over here, I want to put a clause which states that I want to see the table with x and y extracted where a condition is met. And that condition for me in this small table that we have could be um, select where age is greater than 30. Now it has extracted all the names with the ages that are greater than 30. Similarly, let me show you greater than or equal to, the age is greater than or equal to 35. Next, I want to see the names where the age is equal to 30, say. And so you see the name of the of the uh, particular celebrities whose age is equal to 35. Uh, next, I want to jump on to a very, very important, uh, and this might be uh, not really frequently used because a lot of the databases are already created, but um, creating tables uh, is also very, very handy to know um, so that you know exactly uh, the elements that go in a table formation. All right, so I just commented uh, out our previous uh, lines of code uh, because I wanted to see and show you a cleaner uh, results table. Um, so first of all, I want to start with a particular command that we've already seen, and that is I want to view our previous table. Um, so we will do that really quickly. And this is to show you that um, under the, the query results of the particular table, you see the data database schema, which is what a table is made of. This particular table had uh, uh, had three data points, uh, namely the ID, name, and age. And associated with each of them is the data type. So we have to explicitly tell, uh, uh, you know, inform the database that an ID is of a particular type. So ID, for instance, would be uh, uh, the integer uh, a data type. Uh, name would be a text, a text-based uh, name um, that they should look out for uh, when creating a table. And the age will also be an integer. So data types can vary. Uh, they can be variables. They can be integers. They can be text strings. Uh, um, but this is something that needs to be uh, informed in advance, uh, especially when creating tables. I'm going to start with the the actual table creation. Now, SQL is very similar to the way we communicate uh, generally, you know, the syntax aside, but we are basically talking to SQL and we are telling it to create a table and the name of the table would be female celebs. Um, and this table should name, comma, age. All right. Now, if I were to run this as it is, I would get an error because I have not informed uh, uh, SQL of what data types are to be associated with it. So I should tell it that uh, table ID should be an integer. 
name should be a text and age should also be an integer. And you will see now that it has made this table for me. Uh, now, the database has two tables, basically. One is celebs and the other is female celebs. Now, if I, if I want to view the celebs table, we will view it the way we viewed uh, before, what we saw before. But the female celebs table is going to come out empty. Um, and the reason is that while we have uh, the bones and the structure of it, there's nothing inside it. So the next step that we have to do is we have to insert values in the table. To do that, I'm going to use the insert into command. And what this will do is that I'm going to tell it that I want to insert data into female celebs. Um, and this table has the following characteristics except now I do not need to specify the data types because this is not the creation type. And I'm going to, so I can also say values here, and then I can go ahead and write my ID is one. The name is suppose Sia, uh, and the, the age is 48. Um, and because now, if I were to view this, let me quickly show you. From female celebs. Uh, oh, okay. So now you see my table that has one uh, as a table ID. The name is Sia and her age is 48. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this for the rest. Um, all right, so over here, I went ahead and I replicated the data with different celebrity names, uh, as well as their ages. Um, you should know that most of this is made up. Uh, so I, I want to tell you uh, one more thing before we jump on uh, to view what this table will look, would look like. Um, there's, there are two ways to write uh, the commands. Number one is in the same line where you're basically talking, uh, say, I want to insert data into female celebrities and the values are X, Y, Z in that particular order. Uh, but another way, uh, which is a good practice to write is to write in different lines. This just helps to read the code better. Um, uh, I prefer the first way, which is all in one line. It's just more cleaner for me. Um, so let's quickly have a look at what this table would look like now. Um, as you see, the table is um, has now uh, you know more data points, and uh, and you know you can add, add as many. But uh, creating tables is very important. So um, I wanted to take a minute to talk to us about it. Moving on, let's dive into some other features respective to tables. Firstly, let's talk about recurring tables. Um, I'm going to view our setups table. As you saw, I cleaned the query results again. So so if we were, you know, if we had a table and if we were to uh, change some, some characteristics of the table, for instance, um, adding a column or deleting a column, what would that look like? Uh, let's talk about altering uh, by adding. So, uh, there's a simple command uh, that is alter table. The table name is female celebs. And what we have to do is we intend to add a column in the table. And the column is going to be called Twitter handle. And now the Twitter handle, it's usually a text. Uh, so the data type is going to be a text, text field. Let me show you what that did. So it's now told me that your female celebs uh, is no longer three columns. It has an additional column and uh, it has a Twitter Twitter, Twitter handle. Um, I'm going to make this capital and I will write handle for a bit of clarity. Awesome. So the next step is to add values in this, in this column, uh, right? And so for that, we're going to use a command, which is called update update female celebs and set the new values of this Twitter handle 
Now, SQL is uh, not case sensitive, but uh, you know, I, for consistency, I just like to write the way I, I've written my previous uh, lines. Um, and so, update female celebs, set Twitter handle as, uh, say, at Sia underscore one. And now we have to specify which particular line this Twitter uh, handle will go in. They know which column, but we have to specify the row. And for that, we have to use the primary, something called a primary key in a table. Uh, and this is very, very important because every table has to have a primary key. And in our case, table ID is the primary key. So, so here we have said that the column uh, Twitter handle will have, uh, will have a text line um, that will be at C underscore one. And this will go where? It's going to go where the table ID table ID is equal to one. All right. Now I'm going to quickly show you what this would do in my code. So it's it's basically will turn the table such that our table now has four columns and uh, the first row of this uh, Twitter handle column is at Sia. All right, everyone. Now, uh, what I'm going to do quickly is I'm going to populate this table um, for the Twitter handle. So let me quickly show you the table that we had. We just had one uh, data point in the Twitter handle. Now I will populate that. Uh, and I have table ID one, two, three, four, and six. Um, and I want us to quickly view this. What we have is basically the entire table with values fill, except that this intentional mistake of keeping row five without a Twitter handle. Um, so while this is intentional, but when you get a lot of data, um, you know, raw data where you don't know if something is uh, missing, what do you do about that? So you handle that with the delete command. And what you basically do is you say, I want to delete from the table where the Twitter handle is not. That's the, that's the command. And hence, I'm going to show you what this would look like again. It would make us another table without the fifth row. So you see the fifth row is gone now. So that, again, is a very important uh, command that you should know in SQL. Next, I want to explain to you a couple of concepts which I think are, are super important, um, especially when looking for relevant data points. I went ahead and created a table and um, I've inserted values very, very identical to how I uh, showed you before, except that you might notice a little difference this time, and, and which is that what we did last time was, was this where we had values, uh, you know, stated explicitly um, again and again for each of the of the row that we added. Uh, there's another easy way to do it, uh, where if you are to populate a bigger table, then you list the values uh, uh, just once. You list values, um, the value command once, and then you add all of the rows that are um, to be in that in that table, and then you put. Uh, so this is, uh, it basically does exactly like we did before, except it's a different, uh, a cleaner way to write. Now we will also quickly have a look at it to see if our table is, has been populated as we want. All right. Ah. Okay, female syllabus. Perfect. Um, so now that our basic groundwork is done, let's move on and talk about some advanced queries. Um, and these would be the like command, the in command, the between command. So the like expression is basically used for pattern matching. The in command is um, another very important command, and it's used for filtering values. And the between command is used for filtering values uh, for ranges. Um, we have looked at the between command um, in the beginning, uh, somewhere in the beginning. Um, so first of all, let me pick up the like, like command. So the, the like command, and with that, the percentage sign, which is a wild card character, is very important for pattern matching. Now, how do we use it? So again, 
to fetch uh, from the table a female selects uh, where name if you remember our name was in capital so where name is like like what like sia for instance we did this if you would remember let's see what this gets where name is sia now if i want to say where name is like sia and where name is like sia and it begins with sia so any name that has sia fetch those data uh, points for me so you will see that while the first uh, command the first instruction fetched just sia the second one gave me sia uh, all the names with sia similarly let's see what this will do for us mm. yeah so because i don't have sia in between anywhere let me actually let me tweak this a little and then show you yeah, so while the first command gives us SIA, the name SIA, the second command says anything that starts with SIA, so we get the two names. And the wildcard expression before and after the SIA would mean that I want any any piece of text that has SIA in it. Right, so so what I have here is basically I have an underscore followed by a wildcard. I want you to extract me any piece of text that starts with an L. So, you know, as, as you saw in SIA and the percentage sign starts with an L and I don't, and the underscore says, da -di da -di da -di da whatever can happen in between. Then I wanted to end with an E. So what will you extract for me? They're saying we do have a text piece that starts with an L and has something in between and ends with an E. So this is what a wildcard and an underscore will fetch for me. We've discussed like, now let's discuss info filtering. How can we use in? Um, so select name from celebs where name and in the name in the data points you have names like uh, yeah there is no Madonna so again I have Sia uh, let me change that to Beyonce then the data the respective data is extracted with Beyonce again for now I'm going to use the between operator between command uh, select from celebs where where the the age is between say 40 and 50 all right so it says the age is between 40 and 50 for these many people um okay perfect um so so this is um a couple of advanced operators we discuss the like in between and the wildcard character moving on another important command is that of order by um, so ordering really helps you understand data trends and see things clearly so the way this works is that we basically want to see the table um, um, which is female celebs again and this is the table that we are seeing. You see that the table ID has been rearranged and the age has been ordered by age, where the age is in an ascending order. So when we don't specify, it automatically arranges um, or, or orders uh, by ascending order. If you want the order to be in the descending order, then we specify. Um, so what we'll see here is that in this table, um, we will see that the age has been ordered in a descending fashion. With that, let me congratulate you for sticking along for so long. You have done quite a bit in your SQL journey. I'm confident to say that if you have seen both the videos, the beginner and the advanced, you are very well versed with SQL. The next steps for you should be to just practice as much and to go out there and show your SQL magic in the real world. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel and let us know what you want to see next so that we can continue to make engaging content. All the best. See you later. Bye bye.